Hello and welcome back to PaleoCast. My name's Dave Marshall and I am here joined by Tom Fletcher again and this is the start of episode two of our look at Life on Our Planet, the new series on Netflix. Pleasure to join you again for episode two, one of the best. Oh, definitely in terms of uh, my interests and yes, hopefully your interests the audience being too. Crunchy and squishy things. Crunchy squishy and old yes paleozoic crunchy squishy stuff how i like my organisms yep definitely what is episode two about i mean there's there's so much to talk about what is it about conceptually what is it about geologically in terms of time range all of those things cool uh, so um episode two is the first episode really that starts you on the journey wait wait through... whoa, hang on hang on this is timed i forgot about that i forgot we were doing that 14 seconds, mate. Three, two, one, go. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, so episode two is the, the first episode that really starts you on a linear journey from oldest to youngest through geological time. So we start with really ancient stuff, the, the algae, the cyanobacteria, and then we move on to uh, the rest of the Paleozoic, which is the, the evolution of fishes after nautiloids and that kind of thing. And then we move on to the Devonian mass extinction right at the end. You know that this is getting worse. Oh no, was it like over 14 seconds? The last one was 14 it, it seconds. It was well over 14 seconds. It was 22 oh. seconds. 22 seconds. Oh. It's because you surprised me, Dave, with these. I can't do it. My brain doesn't work that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> not fair. Not fair. I did not do episode two justice just there. <laughs> mm. Not by a long shot. Okay, well, okay, 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 okay. I do it properly then. All right. Um, so I, I will try and keep it short though. Um, so episode two is, is rather than episode one, where we, it was kind of a, a highlight of the, what you're going to see in the series and um, a sort of explanation of the rules of life. Episode two starts you on that journey from oldest to, to youngest. So we start with some of the most primitive organisms, these single cell uh, blue green algae. And then we move through the Cambria and the Ordovician Silurian to the Devonian, where we have a, a, the mass extinction. Um, and there's a mass extinction in the Ordovician as well, spoiler alert. And yeah, we, we moved through the animals that lived in those time periods and it's, it's glorious. It's all the marine life that you love. So this episode for me has my absolute favourite animals. These are all the ones that are really old, really crunchy, early arthropods, early fishes, cephalopods, things that look weird and alien. And I absolutely love that the whole series, Life on Our Planet, doesn't just deal with dinosaurs, that we actually get down into some of the earlier life forms that, you know, people just might not be so aware of. Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, it's it's weird that people are so obsessed with the later animals when actually some of the most important times were, were in the Paleozoic, you know, some of the most important transitions. Uh, the evolution of fishes being my personal favourite, obviously, because <laughs> of my vested interest research-wise, but... Yeah, it's 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 a really pivotal moment in the series, I would say. And yeah, some of the events that happened this long ago, for instance, the Cambrian explosion, the Great Ordovician biodiversification event, these are all formative, absolutely crucial stories to what happened to life on Earth. It wouldn't be the same if the events that are depicted at this time didn't happen. You're absolutely right. And the extinction events as well. We cover two of those mass extinctions in this episode alone. So it's it's really pivotal time. So one of my favorite scenes in the whole series is in this episode, and it is the jellyfish. All right. Teeny, teeny, tiny jellyfish. I have never felt such tension before for something so small and essentially brainless. And just think about the reproduction of jellyfish. Have you ever seen jellyfish stacked up in a tower? That's just one part of their life cycle. When you see a jellyfish swimming in the ocean, that's, that's just a tiny part of its life. It spends a lot of the time attached to the seafloor, and then it pops off loads of little jellyfish clones. It's crazy. Strobilation, that's called. Yeah, it's, it's incredible, isn't it? As you say, the, the, the stereotypical jellyfish is just wafting around in the sea but i think they're they're way more beautiful and interesting and magical when they're on the sea floor doing their thing 
And that that was a really important part of uh, the evolutionary story we wanted to tell as well, because uh, there was you know a time where everything was cemented to the sea floor, or just just you know filter feeding and 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 doing their thing. But there's only so much real estate that you've got in a two dimensional flat plane of the sea floor. So the only way is up for these things, and that little sequence, that natural history sequence, really demonstrates that the benefits of entering this three dimensional space to. Uh, to find new food, to find mates, etc. Just having that ability to move in, uh, in in the open water was a crucial moment in evolution. And I think it's captured in a really magical way in that sequence. So really, really glad that you enjoyed that one. Tom, what's your favorite bit? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think my favorite bit is probably the cuttlefish mating sequence. Again, it's a natural history sequence, but it demonstrates really well the intelligence of cephalopods generally. Sorry, cephalopods, isn't it? <laughs> I always get that wrong. What is it, Dave? Is it cephalopods or cephalopods? You'll have to wait until we speak to uh, Professor Klug. Okay, okay. So cephalopods <laughs> are really intelligent, and I think you know the the cuttlefish sequence really showcases that. And we've got a. Uh, I won't give anything away, but some quite intricate behaviour going on. And uh, yeah, it's quite heavy in, in cephalopods this episode because they're such an important group and such an ancient group. So I think that's probably my favorite. Okay, well, let's get into some more details of the cephalopods, I like to say. Uh, is, with... this, is it definitely cephalopods, Dave? Are you sure? Y you can use either. It doesn't really matter, really, does it's, it? Usually you're the person who says, oh, I can't believe you said Ordovician that way. It's this way. You're a real, real stickler. You're the you're the worst person in the world for correcting the way I say things. I, I can't help it. I, I read things, Dave, you know, and sometimes I mispronounce them. You know, you shouldn't jump on me like you do. <laughs> I do, but not in the podcast. Okay, right good. now you can say it however you want. You can say Ordovician, and okay. I won't be bothered. You could even say niche instead of niche, and I oh, really? will just, it'll just flow over me. No, I, well, I don't. I don't believe you. I think behind uh, behind the microphone, if the webcam was on, I'd see you scowling and shedding a tear. M maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll move past it. <laughs> we we will. Just don't say Dunkley Osteus. Okay, I can't. Yes. I can't deal with that. No, no, fine. <laughs> So for episode two, we're going to be talking to Professor Christian Klug from the University of Zurich, and we're also going to be talking to Ed Dyer, who is a researcher at Silverback. And then also, uh, Tom, you'll be back to talk about Dunkelosteus, correct? It will be my pleasure. Cool animal. Right. I'll see you there soon.